What's going on guys, Brandon Kaiusev here with Kaiusev Trading and in this video we're going to discuss the ultimate short interest indicator. If you don't feel like watching the video, the link to this indicator will be in the description. It is accessible on TradingView and I have instructions on how to use the indicator here in the user inputs tab. You can come here to instructions, select on, and this will give you a brief overview of what's going on exactly here and how to use the indicator. So you can also look at these instructions if you don't feel like watching the video. Other than that, let's comprehensively explain what's going on here. So this indicator does quite a few things with short volume. First, all this short volume is pulled from Quandl. So FINRA data, this is FINRA provided short volume. You can see here in the source code that we're pulling short data for whatever ticker that we're on. That's on NASDAQ, BATS, NYSE, or AMEX. Uh, we're pulling this data from Quandl from FINRA. So this is FINRA provided. TradingView also provides short volume that they get from FINRA, but unfortunately, the data that I pull from Quandl and add together is just usually a little bit different than what TradingView provides. So if you go here, for instance, you can look up uh, GME short volume provided by FINRA. TradingView hosts this data as well, and you can access it. So what I did was just made it so you can use either of these data sources. So you can use this Quandl data that you can see that we're pulling here in the source code, or if you wanted to, you can use TradingView's data, which we just looked at here was GME short volume. You can use TradingView's data as well, and all these calculations will change and use TradingView's provided short volume instead. Right now we're gonna use Quandl, and let's go ahead and let's talk about what we're doing. So of course we can see the current short volume for the session. Remember, this is all provided by FINRA. This, uh, we're not classifying volume based on price action or how prices move or anything like that. So we have total short volume for the session. We have the average short volume for the session. We have total volume, the average volume, and the current short volume ratio for the session, and the average. Now, let's go ahead and discuss what's going on with this line here. So this red line connects the two-year high price to the current session's high price. And this label provides data for the total short volume since the two-year high price. So we're gonna go here to the two-year high price. So all short volume since this session to the current session is calculated, aggregated, and provided here on this label. So the total short volume since the two-year high and then the date of the two-year high stamped, it was January 28th, 2021. We have the approximate dollar value of short volume since the two-year high which is 90 billion, uh, this is going to be approximate at best. I use volume weighted average price for that calculation. Unfortunately, there is no accessible data on TradingView that provides the number of shares that are currently held short for the stock. We only have short volume, so this is the best that we can do with this. Then we have total volume since two year high. We have approximate dollar value of total volume minus total short volume, 327 billion. And then we have the short volume ratio, which is just simply short volume divided by total volume times 100, it's 21.69%. So the short volume ratio is greater than 20%. I coded the script to where if the short volume ratio is greater than or equal to 20%, then a red color will be used. So for instance, we have a red line, red label. We have red labels here, red boxes. This means that for the corresponding period, short volume ratio was greater than or equal to 20%. If the short volume ratio is less than 20%, we'll have green line, green boxes, green labels, and things of that nature. So let's go ahead and see here what this is actually capable of. It's pretty cool. And I'm gonna hit bar replay and uh, just check out these calculations because they're going to continually update per session. So it's a pretty cool thing. So we'd see that we're tracking the two year high to the current session's high and all these calculations are updating, updating, updating. Uh, essentially a cumulative total that resets itself. So short volume is for all these sessions is being added to the total. Total volume is being added to the total. The short ratio is being calculated for all these sessions since the two year high to the current session. So it's pretty cool. And then what are these boxes? So the algorithm also detects new one-year highs in short volume reported by FINRA. So when there's a new one-year high in short volume reported by FINRA, the algorithm will detect that 
and it will stamp the session that that one year high took place. So on this session, for instance, and then it will aggregate the total volume and total short volume for the nine surrounding sessions. So five sessions to the left, four sessions to the right, and the session that a new one year high and short volume was achieved. It will aggregate all that short volume, all the total volume, and run those additional calculations. So we'll have the short volume percentage of total volume was 28% at this level. And we have the volume weighted average price area. So we use VWAP, it was 1089. And then we have the 10 session short volume approximate dollar value. This uses VWAP, so it's not going to be precise, but it could give us a fair estimate. And then we can see here, there was a new high and short volume on this session as well, but we have a green box and a green label. And that is because the short volume ratio was less than 20%. When it's greater than or equal to 20%, we get red box, red label, etc. Now, the algorithm also detects uh, pivot high points. So price peaks, we can think of these as resistance levels, just high prices that prices failed to move higher than over a specified number of sessions. So for the pivot high points used for this algorithm, it's 25 sessions to the left and 25 sessions to the right. So a total of 51 sessions. All that means is that this high price that was achieved is the highest high price achieved relative to the 25 sessions before this high price and the 25 sessions after this high price. So if we just go ahead and watch this in action, let's go ahead and do that one more time. We can see this is the highest high price and is higher than the high price of the 25 sessions before the current high price. Now it needs to be the highest high price for the next 25 sessions as well. And once it is, our algorithm will stamp it and then calculate the total short volume, the aggregate total volume for this particular session, three sessions before it and two sessions after it. So let's go ahead and watch it. Boom, okay, so we could see after 25 sessions, this was considered a pivot high price. The algorithm stamped it, aggregated the six session short volume, six session total volume, calculated the short volume ratio here, calculated the volume weighted average price, and of course the approximate dollar value of short volume. So that means that for these six sessions, it is the session of the pivot high, three sessions to the left, and two sessions to the right. And all of that is added together and calculated. So that's pretty much it. If we go to like a security like Microsoft, you know, the short volume ratio is gonna be low. So all this is going to be green. So this is basically telling us that relative to the total volume, there is not a lot of short volume for this particular security and then everything is just going to function the exact same so i'll go ahead and do bar replay and we could see that let's let's go ahead and do bar replay here so we can see the two-year high is constantly changing and it's pretty cool so all these calculations just reset until finally there's a two-year high and prices fail to move any higher than it so we could see all these calculations are updating everything is being added together pretty cool thing so the link to this indicator will be in the description. Be sure to check it out. Let me know if there's anything you want me to add to it. This is a project that will be permanently worked on. So if there's anything you'd like me to add, please let me know in the comments below. And thank you for watching.